Hey everyone, I just got my hands on EcoFlow's newest product, the Glacier Dual Zone Fridge. Let's dive in and see how it works and if it's really worth the premium price. The Glacier is a three-in-one device that is a dual zone fridge freezer and ice maker powered by a quiet and efficient 120 watt compressor. It's 38 liters or 40 quart size, which is the perfect size for my family of four for multi-week road trips. You can power it with your car's 12 volt or AC wall outlet like a typical fridge, but this also has an integrated solar charger and the ability to go wireless with its internal battery. Now this is a premium product packed with features that make it competitive to brands like Dometic and ARB with a price to match. During launch week, you can pick up the Glacier with early bird pricing for $7.99 or $9.99 with the internal battery. If you want the wheels and telescoping handle, that's a $99 accessory. There's limited stock, so if you are interested, I'd pick one up now and save the 300 bucks. Use my coupon code in the description to save an extra $10. My Glacier came packed really nicely, and in the box you get the Glacier fridge, the AC wall adapter, DC hard charging cable, basket, divider, warranty card, and instructions. Now, if you order the accessories, they will arrive in a separate shipment, maybe two to three days after you receive the fridge. The exterior of the Glacier has a modern and sleek design. There is a pair of beefy carry handles that can be removed to save space when mounted onto a fridge slide. The lid has a nice textured surface that I really like the look of, and it feels super solid, but keep in mind this is not reversible like some other models offer. There's a bright clear display that tells you the state of charge for the internal battery, the current temperature of the unit, as well as the status on the ice maker. I really like the chrome accents and the smoked plastic door on the ice maker. It just looks really high end. It's IPX4 rated, so it's protected from water splashes and it can be used at up to 30 degree tilt, so this is great for taking off-road. The overall construction is made of vacuum insulated panels or VIPs, which are highly thermally efficient and they don't emit toxics like traditional insulation. This feels super solid and honestly even more premium than my Dometic fridge. When this arrives, you should wait at least two hours to set it up, ideally waiting a full 24 hours before plugging it in just to let everything settle. While you're waiting, you can attach the battery, you can attach the wheels to the bottom, and bolt the telescoping handle onto the side. Before you turn it on, make sure there's at least two inches of ventilation all around the unit so it can stay cool. I definitely recommend pairing this to the EcoFlow app as soon as you can. This has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so you can control the unit from your phone and access advanced settings, as well as installing firmware updates. Let's take a look inside the unit. So the lid opens from the front, and there's a nice seven inch wide button that you grab with your hands as you open it up. It hinges very smoothly, there's no wobbling at all, and it latches with a satisfying click. The seal is very tight when closed because of this thick gasket that runs around the lid. When you open the lid, a frosted white LED illuminates the inside really nicely. Inside, it's a pretty typical fridge with a removable divider in the middle and smooth white plastic walls. There's only a basket for the left-hand side. For some reason, I do wish they included the right basket too. Now the ice maker takes up the whole right-hand side above the compressor, so you lose the small cubby most fridges have for things like vegetables and small containers of things. At the bottom, there's a drain plug to help with cleaning. The Glacier has two cooling modes, single and dual zone. To activate dual zone, you just slide the divider in on these guide rails and it will automatically detect when it's there and you'll see two temperature zones show up on the display. The smaller right-hand zone is for the freezer and it's about 15 liters. The larger left-hand zone is for the fridge and it's around 22 liters. In a single zone mode, you just pull the divider out and it will automatically switch to a single zone 38 liter fridge freezer. There's a clever design that stows the divider into the lid and it can be used as a chopping board. You can set it to either be a fridge or a freezer based on the temperature you choose. All right, let's move on to the ice maker. Now this is a very innovative feature because it can make a tray of 18 tube shaped ice cubes in less than 15 minutes. So to make ice, it's very simple. First, you have to fill the reservoir with cold water to the max line. This uses about 44 ounces or 1.3 liters, and you can make four trays of ice cubes before you need to top it back off. 
To start the ice maker, you just press the ice button and you can press it a second time to toggle between small and large sized ice cubes. After five seconds, it starts making ice and shows a countdown timer, which will vary based on temperatures and what size ice cube you've chosen. Let's start off by making some small ice cubes. I think it's so cool to see the ice form on each of these metal pins. Large size ice cubes take around 14 minutes. Once the ice is made, it will automatically run a release cycle for 30 seconds that warms up the metal pins and releases the ice cubes. Next, you can just pull the tray out and use the scoop to remove the cubes. I recommend storing this in a Ziploc bag so you can break it up because they're gonna get stuck together because they're very wet ice cubes. I made four batches total, two small and two large, and together those equal basically one pound of ice. The fans are loudest when making ice. They ramp up to 45 decibels at one meter, but that's only about 10 decibels louder from the background level. And best of all, it kind of has a nice soothing fan sound. A few things you need to know about the ice maker. First, you can't make ice only with the 12 volt battery. So you need to have the extra internal battery installed or plug it into the wall because it pulls a lot of power. How much? Well, when I plugged in my watt meter, it pulled 130 watts, which is quite a bit. Based on the amount of power it pulled, I estimate this uses around 30 to 40 watt hours per batch, which isn't too bad. When the glacier is making ice, it will shut off the fridge or freezer so it can really focus all of its energy on making ice. What that means is you don't really want to do many batches back to back because it could cause the temperature to rise quite a bit. When you're done making ice, EcoFlow recommends draining it to avoid stagnant water. To drain the water, you simply open this door on the side, pull out this drain tube, and empty it into a container. Once it's drained, you actually need to wipe it out. I found it never really fully dries by itself. It's a little bit of a hassle to be honest with you, but I think if you're making ice frequently a couple times a day, you probably can just keep rotating it through. All right, let's talk about how you power the glacier. So there's four different ways that you can power it. First of all, you can use the included AC wall brick now this is a 180 watt adapter and it worked really, really well and it doesn't have fans so it's super quiet. Next, you can attach this to 12 or 24 volt DC cigarette input with the included cable. Now this offers three levels of battery protection that you can control from the app. You can use this with your car or with a power station. At first I tried the River 2 and that worked for a little while but then shut off. And when I asked EcoFlow about this, they said that the River 2 actually doesn't have enough power to fully keep the glacier happy. However, you can power this with the River 2 Max and Pro, and both of them work perfectly. When I power this with the River 2 Pro's 768 watt hour lithium battery, I was able to run this as a single zone fridge at 34 degrees for 100 hours. As a single zone freezer at zero degrees Fahrenheit, it ran for 30 hours. In dual zone with one side being 34 and the other at zero degrees Fahrenheit, it ran for 38 hours. The third way you can power this is through its internal 298 watt hour battery pack. This uses NCM chemistry rated 800 cycles. It weighs 4.2 pounds, which is pretty light. I think they went with NCM battery chemistry because of the weight and size constraints that they were dealing with in the fridge, but I really would have preferred that this was LFP. The battery slides into a compartment on the back behind a door. There's a four level LED indicator for the state of charge, and it's also indicated on screen as a percentage, which is much easier to read. You can pop out the battery and use it as a battery bank to power a laptop, tablet, phone, or drone. The battery has a 100 watt bi-directional USB-C port that can be used to charge it and power devices. You can actually use the USB-C port inside the fridge. However, it's a little awkward to use with the door. When the battery is installed, it's automatically recharged by the fridge. So what kind of runtime can you expect from this 300 watt hour battery? Well, in single zone fridge mode at 34 degrees, I ended up getting 46 hours of runtime. With single zone freezer mode at zero degrees Fahrenheit, I got about 14 hours and I got a dual zone runtime at 34 and zero degrees Fahrenheit of 18 hours. The fourth way you can power the glacier is through solar, which is very unique. It includes a 180 watt solar input. I plug this into EcoFlow's 220 watt bifacial solar panel and it charged it up in two hours and worked great. It's important to note that this cannot run directly on solar, so that only works if you have the internal battery installed. Next, let's talk about noise. The glacier is whisper quiet and the fans actually make a very pleasant whirring sound, so I don't think this would bother anyone in a camp setup where you might be sleeping very close to it. Compared to my Iceco, both are similar in terms of loudness, but I prefer the sound of the glacier. 
I also tested how well this could maintain a set temperature. In standard mode, it runs the compressor pretty much nonstop, so it could keep the temperature within plus or minus one degree, which is very impressive. In eco mode, the compressor cycles less frequently, and so it lets the temperatures rise more, so it varied by about plus or minus two to three degrees Fahrenheit. The biggest issue I found is that the temperature would be off from what I set it at. For example, if I had it set at zero degrees Fahrenheit, the actual measured temperature at the very bottom would be closer to eight or nine degrees Fahrenheit. My ISCO was also off by eight to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, and my Dometic was off by only about five or six. They all seem a bit off, so err on setting a lower temperature and use a thermometer to check the actual temp. All right, well, let's talk about the pros and the cons of a glacier, starting with the pros. So first of all, the fact that this is a 38 liter dual zone fridge freezer is actually very rare. Next, it's very quiet and efficient. The ice maker works great. The integrated solar charging and battery make this really, really cool and able to be used off grid. I really like the rugged modern design of this, the app control. It has a great two year warranty and EcoFlow is known for having really good support. But is it perfect? Well, no, of course not. So the cons are obviously that this is a premium product, so it's quite expensive, but it is packed with features. I wish that the internal battery pack used LFP battery chemistry like EcoFlow has switched over for their entire line. I found that the ice maker worked really well, but cleaning it was a bit of a chore. The ice maker cover feels fragile. I can see this getting broken or scratched pretty easily. I think it's weird that they only include one basket. I don't know why there is not a second right-hand basket. I wish there were more USB outputs. They're kind of inaccessible behind the door. The battery and wheels are accessories and make it pretty pricey. And I think the main thing with any sort of a compressor fridge is it's really all about longevity. So EcoFlow really needs to build the reputation of these fridges and make sure that they last a very long time. And so that's a little bit unproven. The EcoFlow Glacier is a really unique fridge freezer because it packs a ton of features into a mid-sized unit. Now, most dual zone fridge freezers are 75 liters or larger, and none of them include an integrated ice maker. If I was designing a compact camper van, I'd give this a serious look because having an ice maker is clutch. Sure, it's not cheap, but I've learned my lesson with cheap fridges. Yes, you can buy a very inexpensive fridge from Amazon, but you're taking a very big risk because most have very limited warranties and poor support. When something goes wrong, you're gonna end up tossing it out. The Glacier may not be for everyone, but it occupies a niche that needed to be filled. If they can prove the longevity in the wild, they will give the big brands a run for the top spot. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Till next time.